is I've created two distinct pages. This year, um, the college wanted to break up the course because of the fact it was a seven credit course. And so I made two distinct identities, one for the lab component, one for the theory component. Uh, the idea being that it would be easier for my students to navigate. One of the things that I incorporated a few years ago uh, with help of the hub was instituting a professionalism mark. Uh, because we're in the trades, um, we have a bit of an issue with personal responsibility, um, a lot of a lot of equipment damage, as well as attendance. So we instituted a professionalism mark and there's a rubric that was developed and it gives the students um, basically this is at this point in time 10% of their overall mark and one of the things is we have a co-op placement for our students and when we're asked to give them an assessment I've explained to the students I need something to go on so we've broken it down into four key areas one would be the preparedness um, coming to our labs properly prepared with your personal protective equipment in terms of your clothing, uh, work boots, uh, the proper uh, shirts, because of the fact they have to have long sleeves, um, as well as uh, natural fibers because of the, um, they're working with electricity, um, as well as being prepared by bringing the necessary tools and test equipment. So there's a preparedness on that. Then we talked about the health and safety. Um, the fact that, you know, even in this COVID environment, you know, are we constantly having to give them reminders about wearing the mask properly? Are they showing up with a mask, uh, the safety glasses and whatnot? And this is one of the, the, the big things for us. And then the personal responsibility. Due to the fact that we have an awful lot of money tied up in our lab and we have limited support because it's not just anybody that can fix this. Uh, it takes an awful lot of time. So one of the things we started doing is giving them the, creating an incentive system to want to be a little bit more careful or to even ask the questions. And one thing I instituted this year and I'll enlarge this, I just got to get the button. was I effectively used all the resource made available to me. I can't begin to explain how we live in an era, an era where a lot of students don't want to read any course materials. I think we're, I, I'm seeing people nodding, the struggle is real. And so one of the things I did is I incorporated this into your personal responsibility about scanning QR codes, any of the videos that we're making available or the tools that we're making available to you, are you actually using them? Come into class with the handouts as opposed to nudging somebody. And say, hey, do you have a spare copy of that lab by, by any chance? Like, no. <laughs> um, and as well as uh, effectively managing their time, um, we've set up a series of benchmarks as well as due dates uh, in keeping with our new grading policy. And a lot of people seem to struggle with it. So again, uh, I'm, I was trying to create that, that incentive. Now, moving off from that, what we've got is I broke it down, like many of you, into course information. So here's um, the, the overall theme was I wanted the Moodle, be, Moodle page to be the, the go-to source for everything related to my course terms of the syllabus, uh, your course outline, how are you gonna be graded and whatnot. What I did as well, and I use a little bit of color here, but I gave the students a week by week snapshot of what we would be doing, but also what is coming on the horizon in terms of these were a series of benchmarks and I explained to them, we have due dates, but what I, I strove to do was give them a series of little benchmarks, explain to them, if you follow these benchmarks on a weekly basis, you'll do fine. You'll have everything completed by the time you have to do a test. Because one of the things that we saw and it was recurring is people would tend to focus on a specific type of lab 
and they would let others languish. And what was happening is they would subsequently go and write the test and they would perform very poorly in certain areas of the test because of the fact they kind of put all their eggs in the one basket. So this was the goal ultimately by creating the syllabus that gave them a week by week breakdown. Um, again, I, call, I tend to color code things to make it more real because there's different aspects to the class, such as I've working from two different um, uh, sources of material for their lab projects. One, it's a book that we've been using for years. Another one, I've actually have published new labs and explained to them, okay, you got to get these done this week. Um, I've been finding it a lot easier since I've started in incorporating this. One of the things, and here um, Jenna kind of really upstaged me on this. I thought I was doing good with putting the faculty information, but obviously I've got some work. Uh, I would like to make some improvements on this. The lab, um, our orientation videos, we're working on workstations and it is a system that has been, uh, that we have purchased and it was really expensive and we saw an awful lot of damage, an awful lot due to meter lack of preparedness, not reading any of the documentation. So what we, I instituted with a little bit of help was a series of interactive videos that incorporated H5P. Students were now, now required before I would even let them sit down in the lab and start doing anything was to go through a series of these videos and you'll notice that they are linked one after another. The students had to watch the video, get 100% <clears throat> pardon me, before they were actually allowed to be admitted into the lab. And it was easy to do a reconciliation because as they came in, I would just take their name, go on to my Moodle shell and see, is everything complete? Go to work. What it did do is it actually um, lowered the amount of damage we were seeing to it freed up a lot of my time not repeating the same information over and over because you know we're we're limited to one faculty member for every 20 students and an awful lot of them um you know if they they were a little bit shy about asking they would kind of watch somebody else fortunately if they weren't right watching the right person trying to mimic the right things you know i would hear pop sizzle sometimes a boom in the lab which is something we're trying to avoid so it's you know, um, now these were produced with help of the uh, the hub and we have it on a YouTube page. Okay, so today we're gonna be looking at Now, as they progress through it, I have strategically put in some questions. A fairly long handled flat screwdriver to class, um, a small screwdriver, also a multimeter would be very beneficial for several of these labs. What we're going to do is I'm going to rotate the workstation so we can see in and behind it. There's going to be a question that should pop up any second now. And so it's just embedded uh, multiple choice questions and I have found that even students who may not have done the work, when they sat down in the workstation and they started to realize they had no clue of what they were dealing with, they actually voluntarily got up and said, you know what, sir, I think I'm just gonna to go to the library, watch these videos, and then I'm gonna come back. So it is working. Um, I'm seeing a higher level of student satisfaction, a lot less frustration, and overall, um, I can say that my work environment has really um, gotten a lot better because of this. Now, all of my handouts are here and I'm also incorporating videos. I've also put in, in my lab, what I've done is I actually created QR codes on specific pieces of equipment. And the buzzword at the time is called just-in-time learning. I call it just in time before you make a mistake. But the idea was, 
is that all of my students are working at their own pace. Yes, they are working, it's self-directed, but not everybody is doing the exact same lab at the exact same point in time. And sometimes, and I think, you know, we've seen the acknowledgement, not everybody is taking the time to prepare. So some people are coming in and flying by the seat of their pants. I can't be everywhere at once. So this lets me be there, but in a virtual environment. The students only have to take their cell phone. They, it's a free app. They scan the QR code and it just brings up a video of exactly what it is that I need them to look for or understand how to set up a piece of equipment, how to read a piece of equipment or how to install it. Um, an awful lot of time has been consumed in the lab just running from workstation to workstation to workstation to resolve issues. And I was left with not a lot of time to actually give people some constructive feedback or do assessments. So this has freed up an awful lot of time. Um, it did consume some time in the beginning because here's a video. And take the volume down a little bit. That's going to bring us to one other uh, segment. This device is called an inert. So the whole idea was, and I've actually embedded this, when I revised all of my labs this past June, I incorporated the QR codes and I inserted them directly into the Word document. So now when the student, whether the label may be damaged on the workstation and the phone can't pick it up. If they've actually got the lab document, the QR code is embedded within the document. And at the end of the day, every resource or tool has been provided for the student to work a little bit more independently. Um, I've seen, when I first instituted this, the students took to it immediately. Um, at the end of the semester, when I spoke to my students, a lot of them just said it let me get through the labs much more quickly. Um, I was making far less mistakes and overall I wasn't as frustrated. And that was the key thing. So I kind of hit the mark on that and I was very happy. Um, what I've done in addition is with the labs, I've got a series of quizzes tied to them. So the lab itself physically coming into my laboratory, doing the work, doing the project and taking the readings and getting the data will only give you about 60% of that mark. Uh, it is left up to the student to do these quizzes that unlocks the 40%. Now, um, we're doing an awful lot of work with calculations. And so the nice thing about electricity, if you understand the theory, then what works out on paper works out in real life. Now, when we did this, working with Moodle was a little bit difficult in the sense that I did not know how to go about building a question because of the fact that what we're teaching now is a series of calculations and it's procedural based. It's not one calculation, but a series of about nine steps or 10 steps. And it took an awful long time. So when the student opens this up, and we'll just do a quick preview. Now see if there's a question in the chat. So what I did is this is a typical circuit calculation. I've got a series of given values for each of the components and it is up to the student to solve it. This is called a closed question in the sense that because there's a series of steps involved, what we did is I created a series of blank text boxes where the student would do the calculation on paper and then input their values into the text box. Now I made sure to leave them a note about answering their answer or putting their answers using uh, just um, numbers 
and decimals and not using letters or any kind of special characters, because when you format this type of a question, the system will, would reject it. And I made sure that I put down right at the end, the units or the engineering notation so that it was in VA and not let's say KVA or mega VA. And so far it's been working well. The biggest thing is it was getting the idea of how do I input this and make it work. Um, and so what I leave them a message to is it's better viewed in full screen. And as they're doing the calculations, they input their values and then they can check their mark. So it's basically a template that has been adapted for a variety of calculations. And this is the way I was able to do it. Um, when I was trying to input uh, formulas where it would give wildcards, the syntax was so complicated or complex at that point, I just did not have the means necessary to me to do this. Does anybody have any questions so far? I know it may not apply to your courses because it's pretty specialized. And again, we're putting in a variety of short uh, answer questions. And whenever possible though, I do like to use drag and drop so that people can actually use images and drag and drop text boxes as a descriptor. So if I can go back to... You can see you put a lot of time into this. I can't imagine how much time went into making that. Um, it probably was, you're looking at about a three to four year period, just yes. developing the question <laughs> banks. For sure. Um, I've got notepad after notepad sitting in a filing cabinet because whenever there might be a, a, a problem, I'll actually go back and start looking at it. Like, oh, budge, I forgot to carry the one. <laughs> well, good for you. I can imagine for students in your 